trying to finish the production of this film uh, in August last year, but obviously we are too slow, you know, and because we also have the uh, uh, economic crisis in Asia. So all the investors of this film in the mood for love has problems, so we have to find, stop the production and find another investors. And by the time we have already committed to make a film called 246, so that means we have two films mixed together, the schedule, and the whole process is, um, is, is, is very painful because uh, it's like loving two person at the same time. And, and when we are looking the location for 246, we, we think this part is, should go to In the Mood for Love and vice versa. So at the end, we, we decide the two films should be one film. We should consider these two films as one film. And, and so maybe in the future, when you see In the Mood for uh, 246, you see something from In the Mood for Love. And in, in, in the Mood for Love, you have some things about, from 246. I'm very fond of uh, that period uh, in Hong Kong because it is a special period. Well, uh, the, the, per, the people who are described in the film, the landlady and all these Chinese, Shanghainese communities, actually is very special. And, and there are people coming from China to Hong Kong after 49, so when the communists take over China. And they're living by themselves. They don't have any contact with the local Cantonese. And they have their own language, they have their own food, they have their own cinemas. In Hong Kong, there's Mandarin cinemas, which is mainly for those peoples, and uh, they have their own ritual. And that's why I want to put the film in this, in this uh, environment, because I come from this background, and as a kid, I, I heard about gossips, and I know our neighbors, and, and I want to recreate this part uh, of Hong Kong in a film. I'm only five at that time. We have an overall impression of, the, of that time, and so some of the details in the film is, I think, which is very much beautiful or, or nice than it actually was. But in the memories, everything is fine, you know? Over the years, people keep asking me about, uh, are you going to make Days of Being Wild Part 2? And I, I think, uh, to myself, I said, uh, if I have a chance to make this film, it, it will be the same story or not. And, and, I, and I know I have changed. The way I see things has changed. So for me, I think the biggest difference is in this film, we are describing people who, who, who was married, you know. It's not like uh, uh, this being while they're single. The times is different. In the 60s, I think, all the things are trying to, to create a mood which is everything is covered, hidden. The point of this story is uh, I, I'm not trying to tell a story about uh, an affair. I'm trying to tell uh, uh, a certain attitudes in certain time, a certain periods of time in the history of Hong Kong and how people take these things, you know. And uh, because I, 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 at first I think, well, to make a, f a story about affairs could be very boring because so many films about affairs ha have been made and there will be no winner in an affair. So I try to find another angle and, uh, and I think the whole thing is about the, the time, the period and also how people treat these affairs over the years. They keep it as a secret and I think secret will be the main point of the story. At the very beginning, I, I hate the idea to show the husband and wife because that would be boring, because you have to comment who's right, who's wrong, this, and, and I think this is not the point of the story. And, and, and I'd rather have these two actors go through both sides of an affair. And there's a big argument between me and Maggie and Tony is how they portray the other half, because they have an excuse saying that, okay, how this affair happens. So they want to pretend to be the husband and wife. And they're trying to act like uh, a, a different person. But I, I said, I want you to play as you are, because th this will give uh, another layer to the film, because maybe there's a dark side in, in, in Maggie or in a dark side in Tony. They need an excuse to, to release it. So actually, they are not only portraits, the, husband or the wife, or they are trying to show themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. There's some possibility in their characters. They can be the husband and they can be the wife. 
Actually, I, I, I want to show the changes through the unchanged because the films trying to repeat all the things. The music is repeating all the time. And the way we see certain space, like the office, the clock, the corridors, it's always the same. And, uh, and we're trying to show the changes through minor things like uh, uh, the clothes of Maggie or the relationship is changing, you know. And, and for the Western audience, I think it is a, a pity because there are some details about the food. Because the Shanghainese community, it's very precise food at certain seasons. So actually the food is telling you it is May or it is March or it is June. The armor keep asking uh, Maggie to stay, to eat uh, with them. He's uh, making the wonton. And the wonton is made with certain vegetables, but we don't put it in the subtitle because that will be too much, you know. But that vegetables can only be available in June and July. So that means we know the characters now is in June and July in 1962. Well, in fact, we, we started the project, we called the project as a uh, story about food. And it has three stories in it. And so the, the, the actual story we see in, uh, uh, in The Mood for Love actually is only 30 minutes. It's only concentrated in the restaurants, in the noodle shops, the, the staircase, they buy noodles, the telling and affairs. But after uh, I start this, this part, I think, well, in fact, the main reason for me to make that project is I like this story, so I forget about this and other two, so I didn't make it. I just expand the whole things. So, it, the, the, the most difficult part is we started like a, a, a quick lunch, but it become a, a big fist at the end. We started from 1962 until 1972. It is 10 years. And the reason we want to end in 72 is uh, in 72 or 70s, the, uh, Hong Kong's looks totally different. The people, the behavior, the, how they dress, how they look, how they eat, how they live is extremely difficult, different to 1962. But at the end, I decided to stop in 1966 because that will be an epic, you know, there's too much, the, the, the scale is too big. And we try one or two scenes in 1972 and I think we need a lot of work to, to, to put on that 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 part so and we i don't think we we are financially or, or physically is affordable so we stopped in 1966 which is a very interesting moment in hong kong history because it is because of the cultural revolutions in china we have the riots in hong kong so a lot of people move away from hong kong so it is the beginning of the all this immigration happened afterward. Well, there's another two stories. Is One is about a fast food uh, shop uh, owners and uh, customers. And also the other one is about a kidnapper and a person being kidnapped. Well, actually, we look for a place to end the film because we think the film, at the end, the last scene should be uh, uh, provide something, a distance from the incidents. We can look the whole things from a distance to provide another level. And, and we look for all these things in, in Thailand because we are shooting in Bangkok. We're trying to find some temple or find a doom. And our production manager said, OK, why don't you shoot it in Angkor Wat? Because we have good connection in Cambodia. And I said, why not? Because years ago, I saw documentaries of Angkor Wat. And I'm impressed by, this, by, the, by the place. And there's the relief, all the things. Is, it's, it's, it's a museum of jealousy, passions, loves. So I think, well, we should end the story there. And because of that, we have to find a reason for Tony to be here, to be in Angkor Wat. So we go through all this newsreel, and around that time, the big event is De Gaulle visiting Cambodia. So we go through this documentary, and I like the documentary because the documentary is not only the events, but it. It has effects like waking up somebody, you know. The whole thing is like a fiction, it's like a dream, but there's a certain elements which is true, which is factual. It is like the remains of, of these things, and we can see all these rocks, and we see there's thousands of stories like this over the years, and, and this is a history. There's a, it's a legend from a book. I will use this uh, legend in 
246 and in, in the mood for love at the same time. We're trying to explore how people keep the secret in, in different ways. We produce our films. We have to take the risk ourselves, so we have no one standing behind our back saying that, okay, you have to wrap this, this film. So that's one of the reasons we want to present a film here in Cannes, because we can make this film forever. We have to find a way to stop this production. We need a deadline. So, okay, I said, okay, we can go to Cannes, and then now we know we have to stop all the things, and it's time to say goodbye to the project. I think overall in Asia, the quality of the films has been improved a lot, and, and people's are, are overall, the, 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 the quality is like, uh, you know, uh, it's very close to Western film. But I think the filmmakers, there's no filmmakers like uh, the old filmmakers, like Ozu or, or Kurosawa, which is, they can create a, a details which is extremely <clears throat> beautiful or extremely precise, precisions. And this is the, 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 uh, the situation. We, we are overall, we are better, but there's no exceptionally good. Because there's so many films about Shanghainese in, 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 in recent years made in Hong Kong or in Asia. We are Shanghainese and we don't like it because we think this is not correct. And this is uh, my intention to make something which is accurate. And I want to show people what really these Shanghainese communities are. And so we go through all these details by heart. We know them by heart. We don't have to do a lot of research. Next generation, the second generation, is merged with the local people. And there's no Shanghainese or Cantonese. Everybody is Hong Kong citizens. And, but at that period of time, in 1962, we know that you are Cantonese, I'm Shanghainese, and sometimes we hate each other, we don't talk with each other, and there's, there's, the Shanghainese mother don't like uh, the daughters go with a Cantonese boy. Yes, it is very strict. Even though we are shooting the Shanghainese co uh, community in, in, in this film, and even though, we, uh, uh, like Rebecca Pang, she's Shanghainese, but we know we are not in the tradition of the China Shanghainese, you know. Even though uh, the Shanghai Ch Sh Shanghainese now, they don't know, understand these communities, because it is like the Russians, you know, after the, 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 uh, the, the Russian revolutions, they live in, in uh, Hong Kong, they live in Shanghai. There's a special certain type of people in exile. So uh, 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 the whole experience of this community is like a dream. It is lost and it's gone. One of the reasons we have Maggie in this film because he's so, he has a certain air, certain qualities, which is definitely belongs to that period. The look, the air, the move, she got everything. And, and the Chinese title of this film is, in fact, is The Age of Flowers. Normally it's applied to women, to describe a woman in a, the best, the prime. <clears throat> but I think the Chinese title of this film, in fact, applied to this period. It's The Age of Flowers of Hong Kong. Mark Lee, Li Pingbing, the, oh. the cameraman of uh, Ho Xiaoxian. And we once worked uh, uh, on the project of Fallen Angels because uh, Chris is away, as usual. And this, this time, because uh, uh, um, Chris has only finished one third of the film, so <clears throat> it is a new experience to me because in the past, I, I can be a little bit lazy because I can rely on Chris on the framing, on the lighting, because I don't have to pay too much attention on that because I know, he knows what I want. And now, because I'm working with Li Pingbing, on this project, it is not a film that looks like my previous film. So I have to control all the things, and I'm more involved in the framing, lighting, everything. And it is a process of creative, a creative process, which I can I can get uh, more control on it, and I think now the look of the film is more attached to the content. It's so difficult to, 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 to find locations in Hong Kong which looks like old Hong Kong now. And also we shoot the Singapore part in Bangkok also, because Singapore have the same problems. 
So why are shooting 246 in Bangkok? I, I go around Chinatown and see, well, we should make the film here because this is how what Hong Kong looked like. All the exteriors are shot in Bangkok. The office are shot in Bangkok. The newspapers is uh, shot in Bangkok because they have the old building. And for 50 years, unchanged, is something special. And we shot all this interior, the apartment in Hong Kong. I think it is exceptional for two Hong Kong actors who can spend a year on the projects, trying different things with us. And, and um, for me, I think the, the, mo the biggest challenge for Tony and Maggie is I tell them this film is not going to be verbal. You are not going to express yourself through dialogues. You have to express yourself through body, your small gestures, your glances. And with Tony, it is very hard because normally in, in my film, in my previous film, Tony will be narrator. He has a lot of voiceover. He can express himself. But this time he, he become mute. He cannot provide any voiceover. There's no point of view. He can, he can only express himself through his body. And I think it is a big challenge. And, and they did a very good job. Uh, the Latin music is a reference of time because in the 60s, the Latin American music is very popular in Hong Kong because most of the musicians in Hong Kong came from Philippines. So the Spanish influence or the Latin American music influence is very strong. And as a kid, when we go to uh, restaurants, the music is everywhere. So I want to keep that music in the film, not only as a restaurant music, but it is a, a reference of that period. And we also have some original music, which is, I think, creates the tempo of the film and describes the films. And like the music at, at the end of the film, I think it is, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, poems in itself, the music, you know. And um, I would like to especially mention the one we use all the time, the wars. It is not uh, original music. It is a music used in a Suzuki Seijun's film called Yumeji. And I know the composer, he gave me the tape and I listened to the music before I start shooting this film. And that music become the reference of the film because it, I know the film should be like a wars. It is two people, two person dancing together slowly. And at the end I said, okay, can I use this music in this film? Because we want to show the influence. And, and I said, this is the tempo of the film. Nobody knows Nekinko sings so many Spanish songs or Latin American songs. And also, we never know there's some hit songs is, in fact, came from Latin America. They have only the American versions. I have the music in my mind already. But sometimes I will play the music to the actors or play the music to the cameramen to let them know the, the rhythm. So, like the track shot, all these shots, they have to know the speed of the tracking. They have to know the tempo of the film. <clears throat> the biggest challenge is we always want to keep the audience as one of the neighbors. So the, the way we see these two persons is always behind something. So it's, it, uh, it, it makes um, the, peop uh, the movement of these actors is limited to certain space, uh, certain environments. So it is very challenging to do that. Because I think it's all about suspense, and we learned it from Bresson, you know, there's, we can only see the close-up, we cannot see the whole things. There's so many imagination outside the frame. Actually, the, 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 the text and the captions in the films came from novels written by uh, Hong Kong writers, one writers. The, the name of this writer is called Liu Yi Chang. I want to include that in, in, in the film because uh, I think it describes how people think in that time. And the, the writers in Hong Kong is, is ne at that time is, has never been treated as a serious writers because they are people, educated people or journalists coming from China after 49. They have nothing to do. They, they can only make their living by writing to the newspapers. They, they have write columns, articles about food, uh, horse racing, uh, football games, medical advice, a lot of things and they have to write a huge volume every day. And, and I think especially Liu Yichang, he's very famous at that time, and he writes huge amounts of articles. And this novel, I think, is a very good documentary about 
lives in Hong Kong in the 60s. In the process of making this film, there's so many things come up, like when we are shooting on the street, uh, at the corner of the street. That street actually is a fireman department in Bangkok. The street reminds me of Italian films, reminds me of Antonioni. So I feel we're shooting something like Antonioni. So it is like a homage to, to the, all these people. And when we're shooting in the, in the office, uh, because we have only one angle, that place is too small, so we have a lot of close-up. And that reminds me of, okay, it's like the Bresson films, you know. This film is not verbal. It's, everything is expressed through the body, through the, through the people, how they walk, how they talk, uh, move. And there's some details I want to show in, 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 the, uh, um, in slow motion. And I think most of the slow motion is not carrying the action but the environments, like the slow motion in the in the in the newspapers uh, place, and when Maggie's uh, hang around in the marching tables, and I think it is all about a certain space, a certain mood, and I want to capture that in slow motion. I think we have materials more than uh, two hours, and then we kept only 92 minutes. We edit scene by scene, but because it is the way we work, at the end, I just doing the structures, you know. And it is a, a process. It's not building up things, it's just taking things that we don't want out of the films and keep what's essential and what we think is precise. Yeah.